Hey, what's up guys? I'm very excited to be testing out the world's first quad band mesh Wi-Fi 6C system. This is the Netgear Orbi RBKE 963. I will unbox this thing. I will do some speed tests in wired and wireless backhaul and range tests to see how good this thing actually is. I do have Wi-Fi 6C devices like the Pixel 6 Pro and the Galaxy S21 Ultra and I'll also use a Wi-Fi 6 device like the iPhone 13 Pro Max to see how good it is both in Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E. So supposedly this has a coverage of 9,000 square feet. Granted, take that number with a grain of salt because if you have a lot of thick walls or there's other interference and stuff, this number can be less. And also, if you have less interference and stuff, technically this number can be even more. It has crazy Wi-Fi speeds. I don't think I'm gonna get anywhere near these speeds. And you know, it has the Netgear armor. This might be with subscription and the parental controls. So I'll check those out. And looking on the back side of the router and satellite, so it comes with one router and two satellites. And so the router supports up to 10 gigabit internet speeds. I wish my internet was that fast. But it does support a crazy amount of internet speeds and it does have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port to go to the satellites if you wanted to do wired backhaul, which I will try that. And it would be nicer if they had multiple 10 gig, at least two 10 gig ports, but hey. All right, so, and the reason why it's a quad band is because it has one 2.4 gigahertz band, two 5 gigahertz bands, and one 6 gigahertz band. So making it four bands total. And according to this, it uses the five gig for the Wi-Fi connection when you're using it in wireless backhaul. So just a recap of mesh Wi-Fi, essentially you connect to your wireless uh, network name, your SSID, and when you're, I'll just bring my phone here. So if I'm in this room, I, I connect to the Wi-Fi, I'm gonna be uh, connected to this guy. As I walk to this other place, it detects me, it will switch me to this one, and then as I walk closer to this room, it'll switch me to that one. So essentially mesh Wi-Fi really kills Wi-Fi dead zones and this all happens automatically. All right, so download the Orbi app, secure your stuff with Netgear Armor, and do more with the app. So we'll, we'll see what that is. And you have some instructions. Contact us if there's any problems. Do not return it to the store, says Netgear. All right, so let me, let me just open these up one by one. All right, so the first thing to note is that this router is massive. We have the 10 gigabit ethernet port for the internet speeds that supports up to 10 gigabit, which is pretty crazy. We have the 2.5 gigabit, which can go to the satellites to create a better, faster wired backhaul connection. And then we have three gigabit ports, the power, and then there's a little reset button and the sync button. Now, both of the satellites are identical, so I'll just open up one because they're essentially the same thing. And the satellite has a sync button, the 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, three gigabit ports, the power button and the reset. Now do keep in mind that I'm personally going to use CAT7 cables which support up to 10 gigabits. So I will be getting these full speeds. Okay, so we have our ethernet cable, not CAT, okay, it is CAT6. I believe it's two meters and we have our fairly thick power plug. So they kind of designed it in a way where you plug it into the top, there's space in the bottom, but it's definitely much larger than the other one. And you know, it's the same exact thing for all of them. Oh, if you guys are wondering, it is 100, no, 100 to 120 volts. So it will not work on 240 volts. It's been a week since I've unboxed this thing. I've done all the speed tests, range tests. I have all those numbers here. And some of the numbers surprised me. And to be honest, I've been expecting a lot from this thing because A, it's the world's first quad band system. B, it's pretty expensive. So, I have the other stuff connected. So you guys see, well, kind of see part of the Orbi right here. So that's the one that's connected to my server. This is my Pixel 6 Pro and I'm going to do a speed test right now 
And I'm also going to record the screen so I show you guys. So I'm going to click start and we're going to see how fast it does. So it's getting to, it's already in the 1700s. So this is on Wi-Fi 6E. So this is as fast as it can go. So this is a 6E mesh Wi-Fi. Yeah, so we got 1737 down and we're getting... around 1800 okay and 1806 up which is very similar to what I jotted down which we'll get into all those numbers but it's crazy how fast this thing is now that we finished the demo testing I disconnected the Orbeez and if you guys are wondering I use the Galaxy S21 Ultra for my Asus ET8 which is the one I'm using right now now that I disconnected this but essentially, I also used the Galaxy S21 Ultra to do the test with these, but I got very similar numbers between this and the Pixel 6 Pro. So essentially, I just jotted down the Pixel 6 Pro as the main tester. But I mean, they were pretty much very, very similar to each other in terms of speed and performance. So you can use these numbers interchangeably. Now, as a quick recap, this is the older Orbi, the RBK752, which is actually a pretty good mesh Wi-Fi system, especially considering the price. But essentially, you can see that the new one is much larger, also has more ports on the router, and also has more ports on the satellite. So, and they're also faster ports. But again, you know, the new one costs way more, but just as a size comparison, you can see that it's pretty large. And the Orbi, even this regular Orbi, is not too small compared to other ones that I've tested. Now jumping into the speed test, I first did an internet speed test which goes through my internet service provider or ISP to a public speed test server. So when you use this method, you're limited by your internet speed. So no matter how fast this mesh Wi-Fi is or any router is, you're essentially limited by your ISP when you're accessing the internet. So my internet speeds are 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So getting into the speed test with my iPhone 13 Pro Max, I got 613 down, 349 up. And with the Pixel 6 Pro, I got 861 down, 271 up. Now, when I do the same speed test with my computer that's hooked up via Ethernet, I get those full speeds. So it's really the Wi-Fi test that I'm concentrating on here because with Ethernet, pretty much almost all of the mesh Wi-Fi's I test, I pretty much always get full speeds when I'm hooked up via Ethernet, at least on the main one. Now to find the true potential of this beast, I remove my ISP and the public speed test server from the equation. So what that does is I essentially my, my computer, my local speed test server, and I go from phone to router to computer isolating the router so I can find its true potential speeds. Now I did that both in option number one and you know wired backhaul, wireless backhaul. So let's just get into that option numbering scheme. So I'm gonna use the same as I've done before. So we're gonna start with option number one, which is when you use a router by itself. So just because you get a mesh Wi-Fi doesn't actually mean you need to use more than one. You could just use one of these. So in option one, this one's hooked up to my modem and then these ethernet ports I'm free to connect to my other devices. If I need more ports, I would hook up any one of these to an unmanaged switch. Anyone except the yellow one, which is dedicated to the internet, the WAN, wide area network. Now in option one with my Wi-Fi 6 device, I get 947 down, 701 up. And with the Wi-Fi 6E device, I get 1721 down, 1808 up. So you could see a drastic difference between Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 6, but honestly, they're both very good in terms of speed, both download and upload. And then we get to option number two. Now option two is when I use wireless backhaul. So essentially, that's when I have a router and a dedicated satellite. So because these are both dedicated satellites, well, I'm only really using two of these for now, but you could also add the third one. But in this case, what I do is this one's still hooked up to my modem, and this one is two rooms away, and it's hooked up to power, and this wirelessly connects to this guy. So it's still on the same Wi-Fi network and everything, and when I do the speed test, I'm on 
this one. I'm close to this one. And the reason for that is because whenever I'm close to this one and this one's hooked up via Ethernet to my modem, I'm always going to get those best possible speeds, just like option number one, because essentially it is option number one. But in option number two, I'm using wireless backhaul and I'm doing the speed test closer to this guy. So I get 921 down, 652 up, which is ridiculously fast. And I get 948 down, 922 up. So with the Wi-Fi 6E, you could see that it definitely dropped. So it was pretty much closer to Wi-Fi 6 speeds. But the fact that this is on wireless backhaul is insane. Now I'm gonna skip option three and four because option three and four are when I use two or more routers, but because this is a router and these are satellites, I go to option number five, which is wired backhaul. Now option two and five are very similar to each other, except really the only difference is, is that option five, I now have an ethernet cable going from the router to my satellite, and there could be a switch in between. But essentially, this creates a wired backhaul connection. And because this has a 2.5 gigabit port, and the satellite also has a 2.5 gigabit port, I'm pretty much getting the same exact numbers on wired backhaul. So very, very good numbers. Now jumping into the range test. Now this is the funny one because this one surprised me. Now I will say range varies based on location, based on your house, if you have a lot of walls, if you're between floors, if you're in a building with a lot of other interference like a lot of other routers around. So all of that stuff can hurt your range. But this thing was crazy. Nothing has even come close to this thing in terms of range. Nothing I've tested has come close to this in terms of range. So at 20 feet away, there was a bit of a drop, but still getting very good numbers. Now at 50 feet away, this is when I go outside. And one thing I wanna mention is that Wi-Fi 6E goes on the six gigahertz band, which is the fastest, which is what you guys saw. But the problem with six gigahertz, it's, it doesn't have great range. So what the phones do is they essentially switch to the five gigahertz when I walk farther away. And then when I walk really far away, they switch over to the 2.4 gigahertz. So as I walk farther away, you will notice less of a difference between the Pixel 6 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max because essentially they're operating on the same frequency. So up close, there's a huge difference, but as you get farther away, because now they're operating on the same frequency bands, essentially there's not too much of a difference. Okay, so at 50 feet away, still getting fairly good speeds. I mean, this is outside. And this thing goes all the way up to 320 feet. 320 feet, which is pretty much almost 100 meters away and I was still getting a signal. That is ridiculous. I was essentially across the street, four or five houses away, uh, on the other side of the street, and I was still getting a signal, and I was laughing when I was doing this test. All right, so essentially, hands down, this is the king of range, period. Nothing comes close to this in terms of range. So when I see that 9,000 square foot number on the box, uh, I want to say I do believe that number because, yeah, this, this is crazy. Okay, now moving to the Netgear Orbi app, essentially it's the same app as it was for the RBK752. And, you know, it gives you a fair bit of options. You also can get more options if you go on a browser on the computer. If you go to, I believe it's orbilogin.com. When you go there, you type in the credentials and essentially gives you many more options. You can also separate the six gigahertz band and the 2.4 and five gigahertz. So the 2.4 and five gigahertz can be one SSID and the six gigahertz can be a different SSID. Or they can all be the same SSID and then the router will determine which band your device is compatible with and it will try to connect it to the most optimal band but you also get a whole bunch of other options as well. And the security feature is a 30 day free trial, so it is subscription based, which honestly, for a mesh Wi-Fi of this price, that should definitely be included. Also with the parental controls, it said it was a 30 day 
time limit on that. So yeah, it comes with a free trial, but honestly, for this price, uh, I have to say there's negative points there because those should be included. They're included with Asus CT8 and it costs a lot less than this. So negative points there. Now, is it worth getting this? Why or why not? Well, that's a really simple question to answer. If you want to spend a lot of money on a mesh Wi-Fi system that's going to work very well, this is the way to go. If you live in a large home, this is the way to go. I mean, this thing is phenomenal. It has really good range. It has amazing wireless backhaul speeds. It has amazing wired backhaul speeds. Just overall, this thing is amazing. Really, the only negatives is that I'm, I'm surprised that you have to pay a subscription for the additional security features, and I'm surprised it doesn't come with parental controls, which at this price, it's kind of ridiculous that it doesn't. But if you take those two away, this is phenomenal. I, I mean, the, the range on this, uh, I, again, I was laughing when I was that far away, and I was still getting a connection. It was, it was ridiculous. And yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Is it worth getting this? Why or why not? And I will do another video while I will compare this to the Asus CT8, which is another Wi-Fi 6E mesh Wi-Fi that costs a lot less than this. And I also ordered the Linksys Atlas, which is the other Wi-Fi 6E. So I'm gonna do some speed tests and range tests on that, and then I'll compare these things just to see you know, which one is worth getting and why. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button. I have a whole bunch of other mesh Wi-Fi's coming up. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.